today I'm going to take you on a behind the scenes shoot with me. I want you to get inside of my head once again. Get in here. Yes. There's a lot in here. So the idea is to take you with me on a journey shooting a bodybuilder. And I found this amazing location. It's inside an old abandoned construction site. It's midday. It's um, but it's really nice and cool regardless under the shade. It's one of those times that I can still get outside and shoot in the Dubai desert heat. So let's go. I'm going to show you my equipment that I'm using. I'm going to show you the lighting setup, everything. So are you ready? Let's do this. Cheers. <music> I'm shooting with a Fortex. It's really collapsible. And hey, take, take a closer look at this. Take a closer look at this. For those of you that didn't know the secret, how to collapse a boom stand. Here, loosen this up. All right, loosen this part up and then drop it straight down. Huh? How many of you knew that? If you didn't, you can send me a quick note telling me that I just taught you something amazing. One of the great ways to actually collapse a stand. It then collapses here. And then I got a beautiful, portable, really lightweight boom stand. This is my go-to stand. I've had this for about five, five six years. And um, it's still in amazing condition. Go out, check it out. I put a link below. And uh, you guys should be able to pick one of these up. My light of choice is the Godox AD600 Pro. This is actually overkill for this uh, particular environment, but uh, I'll see how it goes. I might use it at the absolute lowest power. If not, then I'll switch back to my AD200s. But I wanted to keep the AD200s for sort of rim lights and backlighting, because if you look at the scene behind here, you will see that it's, it really doesn't have any light coming from the rear. And I always want to keep my subject with a little rim light or a little backlight to actually accentuate the sides. Because when you're dealing with fitness photography, all of the uh, body has to be highlighted. So that means that you, you want to show the, the shape, the silhouette, the outline of the body, as well as the muscle, muscularity. This is what we're going to hit with the muscularity from the front high. And then we want to get some light in the back to just pop him off of this pretty drab gray background. Cool. All right, here we go. Let's stick this up here. Now the angle of the light will determine how much muscularity and how much shadow you're going to create under the muscle. Because remember, to actually get muscularity, you're actually trying to create a shadow under the muscle. So if the muscle ripples this way, then the shadow will occur on the bottom and that will give you the definition. The light shining on top will give you the contrast between the top and the darkness on the bottom. That's how you photograph for muscularity. Remember that. That's literally all it is when it comes to muscularity. I love this little soft box. I try to keep the light as small as possible. The reason is, is that I'm not really concerned about creating any soft light on the muscles. The idea is to get hard, sharp light so that the fall off is really fast. So I really don't need anything any bigger than that. So look at that compared to my head. Yeah, my head isn't that big. And um, this is gonna be my, my key light, my main light right here. And this just attached by a Boeing's mount. Nice, easy click. It's really light. So now I have my entire portable boom stand rig right here. Now I'm going to set up the backlights and I'm going to put a little color gel on it just to sort of pop this gray background a little nicer. The Fortex, it's a little small collapsible stand. Nice and easy. The Fortex 200 stand, nice. It collapses on itself, easy to travel with, and it just pops down like this. Boom, nice wide base. 
and you get a nice height on it as well. I'm going to use this and I'm using it with this bone mount with a nice cool little honeycomb grid to, which will give me a nice, there we go, sound effects. And this will then give me a nice pop on the background. I'm now going to insert here my AD200, the Godox AD200, my other go-to light. All right. If you guys want to know what's in the bag, my trusty Godox AD200. I always keep two of these in my bag, all times, yeah? So I'm going to put one of these into this slot here. And I'm going to set the channel on B. And the main light over here is going to be set on A. And I'm going to work with just these two lights for now and see how that works. This is my little go-to kit uh, for FX. Red gels, yellow, and green. Uh, my blue is missing. Uh, grid spots. And this is another bulb that comes with the Godox AD200 kit. Um, so this is really kind of cool. You can order these separately. If you have a Godox, you know, you can order this. It comes with a really cool little barn door. There's my blue gel. Um, and it sits in here with a magnet. There we go. And all we do is clip it onto the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna put on the blue gel with the barn doors. Unfortunately, it cannot, this cannot stay inside with the, with the honeycomb grid. So I'm gonna use this own particular model for this light with its own honeycomb grid. So pops in here like this. Nice and compact, the gel goes on top, and this just clips on the edge here like that. Done, easy. So now you have a whole different lighting setup, much more creative, small, compact, something you can easily work with, completely portable. All right, now uh, I'll find an area where I want to work in. I want it with a wall, so. Now we're gonna start scouting different locations. I'm still waiting on the client. He's a little late, but it gives me time to actually focus on this video and, you know, produce some more relaxed work. Yeah? Cool, let's go. Okay. All right, so I'm, you always get hit with this dilemma. How much work do you want to go through to get the shot? All right, so if you look here, come up here, there's a big drop. So my first thought was I wanted to shoot over on that wall, that wall over there. Hitting the wall with that blue gel, it's nice and grungy, it got two tones, it got the, that window in the back. Hit it with the blue gel, put the bodybuilder against it, I think it'll be cool. But I got to drop down then take all the equipment over here, go back and get my bags, because there's no going around that. I just want to show you some of these ideas I have in my head. So I've already showed you the one with the background, the concrete, but now it is literally 12 p.m. midday. But I see these other awesome locations with hard light that I can shoot in. So 
Uh, the camera might go a little white uh, because it's a lot of light out here. But you see that stair shot with the harsh light coming down? That's also a really cool shot with the bodybuilder lying against that head up. So I'm going to take that shot there as well. Um, and then as you come in, you're going to get a lot of depth to feel. If you pan the camera this way, you're going to get a lot of depth to feel here with the light coming from the back. Then I can shoot that. The idea is if you're going to get backlit shots and if you're exposing for the backlight, you're literally going to get dark in the front. So you got to make sure now that you're lighting him properly from the front, still getting the muscularity, but still pulling in some of the background as part of the scene. Cool. Second or third. Yes, it's the third. Getting those perspective shots along the edge of the wall. So if you come up against the edge of the wall here, Arthur, go up against the edge of the wall and look at me. So that, that kind of shot. Yeah, see it? Feel it? Yeah. You see those abs? That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Okay, so that's another shot. So I'm scouting all the uh, cool variety of shots that I can get. I like this little outcove as well here. Sitting here. Nice cool shot here showing the abs. I can put a, a gel in the background here so that it's framed by these two edges and you get a nice cool shot here as well. Third or fourth shot. Sort of leaning on the side right here. Boom. And yeah, so that's what I've seen so far. Now you're inside my head right now. You're there. You're there. Feel it? Mm, yeah. Okay, so we're getting ready to shoot. Now, as I look at my model, I, I'm reminded of one simple thing. Um, and this is a absolute important message to all uh, models, fitness models, especially guys who do bodybuilding competition. A photo shoot is not a bodybuilding competition. You do not have to drop your water to look really hard on camera. It's best for me to have energy in the shots as opposed to you coming to the photo shoot with low water and you're dying. You understand? So the minute difference that the water will show in your, under your skin can easily be enhanced with Photoshop and, and uh, sharpening skills. So you don't have to drop your water. You don't have to suffer. The idea is to come to the photo shoot full, muscles are full, and give me a good performance because I can do the rest in Photoshop. All right, got it? <laughs> See, you're going right under the light. This is your main light right here. Cool. All right, so put the glasses on. Cool. There. So, legs open here. Good. Just flex slightly. Head this way. There we go. So that's the shot. So this is one of those hero shots. A shot that makes you look big. Uh, let's take the slippers off. Bring it here. You got to bring it outside the scene. So I don't have the Photoshop. So let's see, I'll show you what we're getting. Amazing. Yeah. So let's go back here. There. Yeah. Here. And just come in a little bit more. There, right there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So when I say head left, head right. Left. 
right too much good now with that hand just sort of hold on to the glasses yeah now look that way good there we go Good. All right. There. No Photoshop required. Yeah, it's amazing. Very clear and nice. Yeah. So the idea is to give you a shot that sort of. I want you to be able to take these if you ever wanted to go to a clothing store our clothing brand and get shots done you look good in clothes you know what i mean it's that cool look all right let's just go back with the glasses again yeah so hold the side of the glasses with both hands head down and slightly to the side good there we go Good, and relax. Cool. Okay, here. Put the arrow in there. Put it in here. Put the camera in there. Cool. You got that? Okay, cool. Let's see it. Just put the shoes behind the wall. You know, you keep them close to you so that. Cool and hit those, show those abs. Let me see the abs. Good, lean on the wall, good. And then, yeah, cool. So I wanted to make it look, it look a lot cooler. So, cool. And then the head is gonna come to the side here. There we go, hit it. That's it, and we're good. So now I'm gonna put my light, my backlight behind here, up to the ceiling. So it's literally still the same two lights, different setup. So anytime you're hitting your abs, anytime you're hitting your abs, you breathe out into the stomach. Tilt your hips up a little bit and then bring your shoulder down just a tad. But it's more important to tilt the hip up because that will, sh that will hide most of the... There we go. Yeah. Good. Relax. All right. Mm, there we go. So that gives that... So the idea is I kept the same blue because I wanted it to Amazing. match the hat, right? That's Amazing. it. That's the look. That's Amazing. the look you want. Yeah. yeah. So now bring the hip, hand. Uh, no, keep the, keep the shoulder against here. Okay. I want you to keep your finger at the product. Okay. So the under armor, if you come around here, come around from the front, the idea is I want him to show the under armor underwear. So the idea is you put your finger in here, just let it drop a little bit. At the same time, you're, you're, so I'm focusing the area there. Cross the legs, make it look cool, and put more weight on the shoulder. Yeah, but not enough that it sinks in, still kind of push off. No, no, you're gonna go on the shoulder, but you kind of like just, yeah, cross the legs. Yeah, there. Now head this way. There, there, there. Good. Up on the toe. There. That's the that's the spot I'm looking for. Cool. Yep. Hold that and wait for it. And yes, yes. Head up a little higher. Good. I'll flex the lats a little bit. Pop the lats. There we go. Yep. 
Squeeze those abs. Hit it. Head up a little higher. Good. Turn your head to the side more. More. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Nice. Now, because it's a hot shot, head up. Good. Squeeze those abs. Abs. Hey yeah. Yes. Good. So that's where we are. Wow. Amazing. Cool. So now, Thank you very much. I'll zoom in, make sure that the focus is tight. Are you you're recording? Okay. So make sure that the, the uh, okay. I hope you're enjoying my video. There's one thing I got to tell you. There's another fifty percent of this that's included on in this uh, video where I work more with the model. And we got some amazing shots. You really got to see it. Now, the good thing is, is that I wanted to keep this video relatively short, but I want you to also go to my site. I'm, I have a full course on fitness photography on udemy.com and also on Skillshare. And I'm putting down below a nice link that you can pick up this course, which includes so much more than just the photo shoots but explaining to you all about the fitness industry and how you can take your fitness photography a lot further. That means all the different clients you can work with under this genre. I mean, a lot of people don't understand the fitness industry and fitness photography. And I've been in this industry for over 20 years, actually yeah, 25 years. So I can tell you everything you need to know about it. So join this course on Udemy or on Skillshare, either one, whichever one you like. I'll put links to both and you can pick it up 10 bucks, nice and cheap, inexpensive. And I'm telling you, you won't regret it. OK, so guys, thank you so much for your support. I don't make money from uh, from YouTube. I pretty much just promote myself in YouTube. So, yeah. Any help that you can provide by buying my course or just going to the site and liking it, that'll be great. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And of course, subscribe. Okay? Subscribe. There's a lot more to come. And of course, I got to say something during this time when we're quarantined at home. Um, guys, stay safe and also be productive. Be creative. Take this time to actually do some more creative stuff at home, especially when it comes to your photography. I'm starting to get into product photography right now. So look forward to some videos on that. Ma macro, micro photography, something I've never thought of. But you know what? I'm sitting at home, nothing to do really, except to explore other genres of photography. So this is something that you can look at check out one of these Skillshare courses or on Udemy and um, yeah, learn something new. That's what I'm doing. So also looking at rebranding my, my business, changing my logo, all of these things you can learn. So, hey, you got to be able to find opportunities in hard times. And I think that this time when we're actually told to stay at home, it's the best time to get in touch with old clients, start calling old friends, getting in touch with family members you haven't spoken to for a while. So, you know, listen, I don't want to go on about all these other things you can do. Of course, you can find great things to do at home. I'm just giving you some ideas because I'm a teacher. I like to teach. All right. And then that said, go and buy my course on Udemy. Cool. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.